Let's all take a moment before we begin and say this. Let's go, baby! Survivor is back! Oh, phew. I am glad I got that out of my system. Welcome, everyone, to my second bonus video, commemorating the dawn of Survivor 41. It's been 497 days since we've last been blessed by the presence of the former ageless wonder who is slightly starting to show his age, Mr. Jeff Probst. And seeing as to how it's been so long since an episode has aired, I would have loved to talk about something optimistic today. But here's the deal. If I had to guess, most Survivor YouTubers are going to do something celebratory and make something with a positive vibe to it. So let me take the reins and be the antithesis to the good in the world and talk about the absolute lowest of the lows when it comes to Survivor. Oh, need to bring me your torch. Whoa, hold on, not that low. The direction I was going towards was the players that just lost so quickly due to their own faults. The first boots. The worst first boots, in fact. Now, worst is a very subjective term. There are some players that come onto Survivor that are just obviously portrayed as the easy first target, and after doing poorly in the first challenge or something along those lines, they're taken out first, and overall, you can't call them a great player. But that's not who I'm referring to today. I got a list of players who, for the most part, would not have fallen into that stereotypical first boot role, but due to poor gameplay, they really just shot themselves in the foot and redirected the target onto themselves, resulting in them claiming the forsaken, terrifying placement that is every prospective Survivor contestant's worst nightmare the first boot. I cannot believe I got voted out first again. I mean, I'm not gonna like cry about it, but I did make Survivor history, and the good thing about being voted out first again is I know how to deal with being voted out first. Now, the first few seasons of Survivor never really saw the first boots completely shoot themselves in the foot and often found themselves to be victims of circumstance. But this changes once we get to Thailand. John Raymond was a 40-year-old pastor who felt the need to be a tribe leader. On the way over here, you could see who was wanting to take leadership roles, they'd tell you what to do, and I think John in particular wanted to get here as fast as we could. The way the initial tribal locations worked out is that John's tribe was placed near a cave, where they didn't need to worry too much about shelter, but were in the need of finding a water source. And this was proven by the fact that a fellow tribe mate, Tanya, started suffering from dehydration. While looking for water, John ended up actually finding the fresh water before the other tribe mates, but also found a pool of disgusting salt water, and decided it'd be funny to pull a prank on the tribe and lead them to the gross salt water and pretend like that was the fresh water. Although seemingly harmless, members of the tribe did not take well to the joke, probably because the timing was awful, as there was someone who was actually dehydrated and needed water. This led to the tribe's increasing weariness of John, as they were already not loving his bossy personality, which unsurprisingly led to him being the first boot in a tribe full of old, weak, and sick players. Had he just laid low in the beginning and not been so out there, he likely would have made it further, but due to his own actions, he just made his tribe too annoyed with him, which is why he makes this list. When they come, I said, come on guys, we find the water hole, and we'll take them back here and we'll show them the brackish stuff and say, you know, what we're gonna have to do is filter it when we get back and just kind of fool them. You wanna do that? Yeah, that's fine. And just kind of keep fooling them a little bit. I was happy, and I was telling him, you know, that was really, that was a good joke. But then in my mind, I'm thinking that's, it wasn't really a time to joke about that just then. After Thailand, we were able to go a few seasons with mediocre first boots until we get to Tina. No, not that Tina. Tina Shear from Survivor Panama. In a tribe of just four older women with unbelievable survival skills, Tina looked to be a great asset for her tribe, which overall had shown a lack of survival instincts. In this tribe, it seemed that the other women would need Tina in order to survive, so right off the bat, she was looking to be in a great shape. However, after losing the first immunity challenge, Tina decided she wanted to target Suri, who had a severe lack of outdoor experience and was being perceived as the weakest on the tribe. Suri caught wind of this, and she tried to rally the votes of the other two women to go against Tina and vote her out. But the women were divided, as Tina continuously provided a huge advantage for camp life by bringing in fish, creating fires, and constructing a shelter. Tina had a lot in her favor going into tribal council, but unfortunately, this is where things go south for her. When Jeff was asking Tina questions about camp life, Tina decided it would be a smart idea to call out the other three women for being inept at outdoor life and having poor work ethic, which hurt the women and made their decision easy, resulting in Tina being voted out in a vote of three to one. Overall, Tina's survival skills made her such a good asset for any tribe, especially one that had mostly inept survivalists. But due to her blatant outcasting of the others and seemingly putting herself on a level of her own at tribal council, the others had no choice but to vote her out, and she lands here comfortably on my list. Ah! That's a fish. That thing is breathing. Oh my god. Obviously with the tide going out, he must have got caught here. And he's gonna become more... Ah! 
Tina, do you think these other three are pulling their weight? Um, not as much as I would like to. I have a really huge work ethic. I think the girls made a huge mistake voting me out. I hope they do terribly. I have two facts about Tina that I'd like to share, but I can't necessarily call them fun facts. Tina was originally casted to be on the prior season, Guatemala, but had to drop out last minute as her son had just passed away. Her son was something we saw her touch upon during her time in Panama. The producers at CBS then told her to take all the time she needed, and whenever she felt ready to try for Survivor again, she would skip the entire application process and would be immediately placed on the show again, which I felt was an extremely nice thing for Survivor to do. The second fact, which I do find a bit more fun, is that Tina's brother Rob competed on The Amazing Race 21 with his fiancé, and he found just as much success as Tina did on Survivor, as Rob was the first one eliminated from the show. Coincidentally, The Amazing Race 21 is also the season that introduced us to Nadia and Natalie Anderson before either of them competed on Survivor. Moving forward, we actually don't need to go ahead that far, as we get our next bad first boot in the very next season, Cook Islands. Sekou Bunch was eager to play Survivor, and he wanted to make himself the leader of his tribe. One odd thing about Sekou, though, is that he would try very, very hard to lead things around early camp life, but would frequently get exhausted and take breaks, much to the annoyance of the women. He would also never consult the women on his tribe in his decision-making and would make the tribe decisions without their input, like only talking with Nate Gonzalez on the decision to send Jonathan Penner to Exile Island, which was supposed to be an entire tribe decision. Obviously, this is not a smart thing to do, but in this situation, I feel like it was especially dumb as this was only a tribe of five people, and the women outnumbered the men three to two. After losing the first immunity challenge, his failure to include the women on some of these tribal decisions, coupled with his self-appointed leadership role while taking a multitude of breaks, caused the women to, quite obviously, band together as they had a numbers advantage over the men. At tribal council, even with tribe mate Nate on his side, Sekou was unable to get the numbers to vote out Sundra, and he instead was voted out in a vote of three to two. For what it's worth though, Sekou was still liked by the tribe, and the tribe was super torn up about having to vote somebody out at tribal council. It's just unfortunate that the way that Sekou went about playing the game in the beginning did paint that target on him and made him an easy first boot when the women did outnumber the men three to two. Need a break. Hi. Houses making fire. In the name of the book. Sekou, you like to take a lot of breaks. And we're, it's, we've got too much to do. You want something, right? Sometimes you just have to do it yourself. I need a break. I'll give lunch break. <laughs> Luckily, after Sekou, we get a one-season break from the bad gameplay from First Boots before we hop right back into the swing of things in Survivor China. Meet Chicken Morris, the 47-year-old chicken farmer. Chicken started off the game giving various suggestions to his tribe on how to build the shelter and possible improvements that could be made, but this irked a lot of his tribe mates. Chicken became aware of this and, to his credit, chose to change his ways in an attempt to better his image with the tribe. Unfortunately, he took his change to the extreme, and part of his new laid-back approach consisted of completely refusing to give his opinion on anything camp-related, which bothered his tribe mates even more and started this narrative of Chicken just being an annoying nuisance to deal with at camp. After losing the first immunity challenge, Chicken wanted to vote out Ashley, who was very visibly sick as she was dragging down the tribe. However, at Tribal Council, the others thought it would be better to keep her in the game over Chicken, who had done just about everything wrong socially, and to Chicken's credit, once again, he blessed us with a great quote on his exit in a 5-2-1 to two to one vote. First person voted out of Survivor China, Chicken. Damn! That's four, that's enough. You need to bring me your torch. Chicken, tribe has spoken. I heard him. Time for you to go. After Chicken, we get a long stretch of first boots that didn't leave too much of a bad impact. Obviously, going home first is not great gameplay, but nobody was standing out as outwardly terrible. But then we are blessed with quite possibly the single best Survivor player to ever grace our screens, Zane Knight from Survivor Philippines. Zane started out on a six-person tribe and immediately went to the three women and formed a four-person alliance. Not bad. Making moves early? Good for him. Then, to cover his bases, Zane went to the remaining tribe members, the other two men, and tried to form a three-person alliance with them, but then he cracked and revealed that he'd already made a four-person alliance with the women. This made Malcolm kind of sketched out, so Malcolm went and revealed this information to Denise. So, right off the bat, Zane had raised some red flags in the eyes of the tribe. But, if he could just perform well at the immunity challenge, he could change the narrative and prove to his tribe that he was a great asset. 
Unfortunately for Zayn, he had to be dragged across the finish line by Russell Swan due to shortness of breath, which Zayn attributes to his nicotine withdrawal as he had kept smoking constantly up until the last day before arriving at the Philippines. So, after losing the immunity challenge, Zayn came up with an expert strategy of asking his tribe mates to vote him out as a ploy to figure out who really liked him and who would fight to keep him. Unfortunately, his plan didn't work out the way he intended, and his tribe just did what he asked for and voted him out in a vote of 5-1. to one. But don't let this take away from the fact that Zayn is a survivor king and 100% would have been the winner of the season had his tribe mates not been so silly to actually vote him out. All the jobs, they all formed together to make me the perfect survivor player. Hey, you got experience? Yeah. He's a bartender from Georgia. I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm already a superstar. Then made alliances with everybody on the tribe, and everybody seems to think that I'm their only alliance. Like a drill sergeant. Come on, Zane. Come on. Come on. My whole reason why I'm throwing my neck on the chopping block is to establish whether I'm running the game. This whole ruse that I just threw on was just to fill out my tribe exactly how I need to work things. Zane, that's four, that's enough. Gotta bring me a torch. Zane, chop spoken. So, after Zayn Knight's legendary performance, we only have one more first boot I felt needed to be talked about, and that's David Samson from Survivor Kageyan. David didn't necessarily have the worst gameplay, but I do find it funny when asked in front of everybody at the initial tribe division which member of his brain's tribe he thought to be the weakest, he said Garrett on like frame one, instantly who just so happened to be arguably the strongest guy on the entire cast. His instantaneous no mercy decision to single out the strongest guy in his tribe was definitely not the best way to build bonds with his fellow tribe mates. And after losing the first immunity, he was voted out first after Garrett of all people formed a plan to blindside David. Are you used to making decisions like this, David? I make decisions like this often and I'm gonna go with him. Wow, you didn't even think about it. Guy in the green, what's your name? Garrett. My strategy with choosing Garrett was that he's built like a Mack truck and he's got brains too. Now that's going to be a, a formidable combination. Because of your jacket, evidently, you were selected as the leader of this group. Just for the record, the jacket doesn't match the pants, so it's not a suit. And since then, we haven't really had too many awful first boots. The first boots have either been victims of circumstance or just not that great at the game, but nobody really displayed expert levels of poor gameplay like some of the players I've mentioned today. As always, though, I'd like to remind everyone that this is just for fun. I'm sure all of these players I talked about are very nice people, and this is by no means meant to be an attack on them. They came into the game and tried to play a certain way, and it just didn't work out for them. That's it. End of story. Someone has to be the first boot every season, and unfortunately for them, they played a game that resulted in that placement. But as much as it must suck to be the first boot, I promise, there are much, much worse ways to end your survivor journey. So, with that... It's time I snuffed the torch on this video. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, maybe even subscribe if you want to see more Survivor content like this from me in the future because we've got a long season ahead of us and I couldn't be more excited. And, as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. There's something going on. Zane walked up and says, Listen, I already made an alliance with everybody on this beach. Well, now I feel special. Thanks for coming to me last.